Hey everybody, Steph here. Happy New Year. I'm sorry I didn't have a whole lot to post in November, December. Um, December's a really bad month for my family and this year was no exception. So I just couldn't work up the energy to post. But I'm back. I'm hoping to have a better posting schedule in 2023. Today's project is going to be kind of simple involving squares, but it's also going to show a bit of what happens when glass doesn't get to the um, six millimeter rule. Um, as you may be aware, art glass is big on wanting to be six millimeters or about a quarter inch thick when it fuses. That's why when you fuse a single layer of glass in a piece like this, these pieces will draw up and become little dots like that. So that is the six millimeter rule in action. If you don't use six millimeters across a piece of glass, what you do have happen is the glass will want to pull in on itself even on a large sheet and you'll find the edges of your glass will pull up and the center will thin down as it tries to evenly distribute all of the glass. Or if you've got spots where it's thick and spots where it's only three millimeters, you might find that the glass varies in thickness all the way across your piece, depending on what you have. So this one is gonna play a little bit with that. It's a pretty simple one to do. Um, I'm doing essentially a five inch square with, as you can probably see the dots, nine squares on top and alternating patterns like a checkerboard and then another color on top of that to give it sort of an alternating checkerboardy feel. When you fuse this, if it works out right like it did the first time I did it, you'll get kind of a neat scalloped edge around where the excess glass pushes out in sort of a rounded shape. And the end result is a plate that has really neat finished edges without having to cold work it. Of course, if you're really into those perfectly straight edges, skip this project because you're gonna hate it. So I figured out on a five inch square that if I have three inch and a half squares, that gives me roughly half an inch or one, two, three, four eighths to split between my bigger one and a half inch squares. Uh, we'll see how it works out. When I did it originally, I did it a much bigger piece, an um, eight or a ten inch, with four in or with two inch squares, and so this is going to be a little bit different. But for this small five inch, you will need a five inch piece of glass in a backing color of your choice, and then two colors to contrast. If you use black, I don't recommend using a transparent on top because it will just disappear into the black. Opals are really good for this one, but you can use what you want. Like I've said before, I'm not your mother. One second while I take a drink of water. That's better. So, cut yourself five one and a half inch pieces of color one, and five one and a half inch pieces of color two. Um, I'm using white and aqua on a black because I love the contrast of the first piece I did. Why five of each when there's only nine squares? Well, you might find when you lay it out that you don't like five of color one and five of color and four of color two and want to switch it up so you have that extra piece. Then on top of these, we are doing five each. I cut of one inches of colors one and two. You may want to go smaller. I may not be as happy with the outcome of this piece. Um, I want to say when I did my two inch squares, I used one inch squares on top, but for the sake of this one and not wanting to go back and cut all a quarter inch off of all these pieces, we're going to use inch and a half and one inch pieces. So to start, choose your colors, and I think I'm going to go with the aqua as my five pack, so that's going to put it in each of the corners and the one in the center. I have glue down. You're going to want to put your glue down, um, and then Arrange your squares. I'm going to do them. I was doing some weird cuts, so some of them have lines. Arrange your squares so they give you about an eighth of an inch from the edge. I don't like that one's got a weird edge. And this for me is some Bullseye Curious Glass, which is their second. So a few of mine have dark marks, so I have to put it with the shiny side up when I put it down. 
but arrange it, let the glue hold, and then you'll want to adjust, you can save that for the end, uh, to make sure everything is evenly spaced apart. So here is the next one. If your squares aren't perfect, like mine aren't, that's okay. Art, it's art, it's not perfectly created, you know, machined stuff. So it's okay if they're a little imperfect. If you really hate them, go back and cut some more. Since you don't need a lot of either of your colors, this is great for scrap glass to use. I don't know if you can see here, but like right here is some scum. It won't affect the fuse, but I don't want to put it with that color, up, that scummy bit up. And that's what makes Bullseye Curious curious sometimes. Um, I find the price difference to be worth it because a lot of what I use, I end up giving away and I can cut around the imperfections or fuse them like this case down on a black layer and they will be fine. So I'm just going to lay out the rest of my squares like so. And see, if I didn't like this, I could probably put the white on the outside, but I'm kind of fun, fond of the aqua. I go through a lot of aqua and cyan, or kian if you're talking about one of my friend's kids. Hi, Matt. And that will be the last one there. Now, as you can see, my cutting was not perfect, so what I might do instead is square it up this way. And then just give myself a little extra space. Not the end of the world, but I'll fiddle with it off camera because nobody wants to sit here and watch me play for 20 minutes to try and get this perfect. I mean, that would be the greatest go to sleep video ever. And then on top of the colors, what I'm doing is just a dab of glue. I use glass tack gel. You can use a variety of other things. Uh, aloe vera also works well. I would recommend if you use Elmer's or PVA glue or super glue, because I know some people do, um, do make sure you've got something with enough work time to be able to go back and adjust these. You don't want to use super glue that sets up in three minutes and then try and adjust this and have them all pop loose. So I'm gonna repeat the same purpose up top, or same purpose, same process up top, but I am going to do white on blue and blue on white. And yeah, looking at this, I think I would have been happier with three quarter inch squares, but they're cut, it's cold. Uh, Oregon just went through an ice storm a rainstorm and gone with the wind so I'm really not in the mood to be out here in the shop any longer than I have to be so I'm just gonna lay these out and then like I said off camera I will adjust this to make them more even I think they're pretty good but like doing that right there I just you can see this one just sort of twisted a bit so I will want to adjust that but again like I said off camera yeah Inch and a half works great, but I would say three quarters of an inch. Learn from, from me doing this on camera. I should have laid them out before I got too far, but I was just like, yeah, this will work great. We can get it done because I'm so far behind. Eh, yeah, learn from my fail. All right, this one I'm going to flip over because it's got that line from where I tried to cut it, and I don't like that. And I really need to do laundry. All my white working shop towels need to be washed. And the wife did not look kindly upon me using a hand towel from the bathroom. Unfortunately, she came out before I could hide it. Oh well, she loves me. It's And it's a very old hand towel. It used to be bright yellow. All right, so I noticed this has been on screen the whole time, but there we go. That's what it looks like, and when you get done, if you cut five and five, you'll have one extra piece of color one and extra piece of color two. Whether they're big or small ultimately depends on how you arrange your glass. But you'll have one of each. And I'm pretty happy with this, not exactly. I'm gonna fiddle with it a bit. Come on, go that way. And then bring this piece back.
and I will fiddle with it a bit off camera and fuse it and then I will come back and show you the blank. Okay, I have the stacked squares blank fused and before I show it I have a request. If you haven't already subscribed to me, would you be willing to? I'd love to hit a thousand subscribers by my birthday, which is the end of February. I think that's a bit much, but if I could hit a thousand subscribers this year, I would be absolutely thrilled. Now, plug over onto the picture, onto the piece. It turned out really neat. I'll set it down so you can see it. See here how it's got the lightly scalloped edges? I just love that. I think it looks really great because it's a neat way to get an interesting edge without having to cut it or hope it fuses right. The only thing I don't like about this piece that's kind of disappointing to me is there is, and I don't know if you, yeah, you can see it, there's Divot. See it right up here? There's Divot on almost every square, both the white and the aqua, which means I probably didn't clean things well enough. Or my kiln did what my kiln does best and took too long to get up to heat and too slow to cool. I really need a new kiln, and that's on the list one day. But anyway, I'm going to throw this in my 5-inch slumper mold from Delphi and bring it back when it's finished to show you the completed bowl. Okie dokie, so here is the final plate. Well, bowl. I used the Delphi 5-inch slumper, and it turned out super cute. There's the back. I might slump it again because it doesn't have a whole lot of a bottom. It's kind of hard to see, but it's small. So I may run it through the kiln one last time, but it does sit nice and flat. It's cute, spins. I love it. I think these would look really good with a five inch plate slumper, which if I can find the one I bought, I'll put a link to in the comments. Um, and as always, I'll put a link to the Delphi one as well. Delphi, Delphi, I don't know. Um, but this is what it looks like finished and it is super fun and cute. And this is a real easy project to get that nice sort of interesting edge to your bowls without having to cut on a ring saw or do some fancy things. So there you have it. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.